continuing now in part 2. Uh, we're also going to out press this little box down here, uh, auto enable return key. Uh, it's a little bit confusing what this actually means, but it means that uh, a user has to input something, write something in this box before they can press the return key. Uh, so it's, I would actually name it something that it's disabled the return key uh, until they actually write at least one letter. Good. Uh, moving on, we're gonna add a little label uh, on top of our uh, our uh, text field here. You see, let's go here. Uh, it's very simple. We go to our, our bit library and write a label. We press down here, label, and then we drag it. Press and hold, drag it up to when you see the blue lines, the vertical one and the horizontal one. Label, excellent. And uh, we should name it something. They recommend meal time. Let's write uh, uh, name of food. So food. I have to move it again. It's just it displays a little bit. Good. Excellent food. Uh, and now we're gonna add a button. Buttons are fun. And that's pretty simple. We just write search for a. Uh, a button in our object library. You see here. Remove label down here, and then write but. Sorry, button. And let's press and drag that, and then we put right it under the little text field we have. Drag it button here. Good. Uh, that's pretty much all we need to do. Let the incident. Uh, and then we write something that should some text in which should be on, on the button here should be let's say I said the recommend this button should have a function where you reset whatever you wrote in the field uh, text field above so let's write something like that um, set default label text YOLO you keep well, what I mean by writing like YOLO is just basically you write anything here it, 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 there is no function to when you uh, change the text here. All the functions you can find here in the, on the right side. When you actually write the name here, it doesn't change anything. It's just uh, how it looks. Good. Now you're yeah, getting getting somewhere actually. It's getting getting. It's really nice. Uh, yeah. And then um, Apple goes through some like some tips on how to change the the UI of our uh, Xcode uh, environment like some things you can remove and add for example if you look all the way up to right here uh, there is a few buttons we can press to to remove some of these size things uh, to hide them which is useful especially if you're right, uh, using a laptop and you also have this button here to uh, to look at the code uh, if you press that one here so. They call it assistant editor. Mm -hmm. uh, good. Excellent. So now you just yeah, if you, you want to read all this, it's up to you. It just goes through a little bit what these different toolbars do, uh, does and so on. Okay, now we're just gonna stack all these three things. So we're gonna press and hold shift on our keyboard. And then select all three things we have done. So let's just start by pressing this button again to just have what we need. And I press and hold shift, that's the under the caps lock key. I press and hold that. And I press all three um, all things things I've added to my uh, to my app here. The f uh, so you see you have these kind of white little uh, squares to signify that they have marked uh, or selected these three things. And then we're going to stack them. Uh, and the stack button is all the way down here. It's a very little button. It looks like, yeah, what well, does it look like? Like a little down arrow inside of a box. And if you hold your mouse over, it says stack. So you press that. Excellent. Now you see you got a little selection going on, a little gray selection going on for all three of them here. Good. 
Uh, yeah, and then we can just make it look a bit more tidy. So let's go to the attribute inspector and write 12. Uh, wait with that. Uh, spacing. See, now slated this box here, and I write spacing, and I write 12, not 120, 112, and press enter. Good. Uh, excellent. And we're also going to get the pin menu here. And now they suggest how we should um, make this a bit fit our app a little bit better. Uh, and we should do that by using the pin menu. So if we go all the way down here again, I think it's this one here. No, wait, is it this one? Let's see again. Oh no, it's to this one. Like a little sp a box between two brackets or something. It's called pin. Excellent, and I would suggest that we should use, uh, what does it suggest, we should use uh, uh, 60 in the above fields and 0 in the other ones, yeah, right? Uh, so 60, 60 in the top one, and 0, 0 in these two, and we should update frames uh, items of new constraints. So in this menu you have to change update frames to items of new constraints and this adds here add should say two constraints. Okay, so make sure that we have to just write a number here, you maybe have to select a different box so it will know that you have changed two of them. So it says add two constraints. Okay, enter. Oh oops. Uh seems that it's wrong there. Let's just go back to the pin menu. And yeah, this looks wrong. You should change. You should be zero in both of these boxes. Uh, like that. Yeah, that's good. So now you see it's like, like just across the whole app. It looks much more tidy and nice. So remember, you press this one. It should be zero in both of these two boxes, and then update them if it if necessary. Good. Excellent. Uh, yada yada yada. Moving on with the apples menu. Uh, it goes through a little bit, a few more things to where you can add. They also talk a little bit about the size inspector, uh, the inst intrinsic, oh, intrinsic uh, size field. You can find this here uh, if you press the ruler size inspector, and then what you need to change is um, let's see where is that again? Oh yeah, you have to scroll down. Uh, so in the intrinsic size here, you change it to uh, default. Uh, mine was already on default, so it's up to you. So you have to just make sure check, check this already there. Good. Excellent. <laughs> Let's see, I think that's pretty all we need to do. Yeah, uh, we're going to test the app. I guess one more tip from Apple is that there is, if, you know, if everything else fails, there is also a like a little button all the way down to the right here which says resolve auto layout issues if you press this um, this program will like guess how you want it to look like which could be useful but you know not what I would recommend but if you just want to like just make a qu uh, quick auto adjustments this will probably fix almost all of your problems but don't you know my re I recommend you don't press that okay good so that was all of the our tutorial this so this is an app which is pretty done now, and now it's going to jump to the exciting part. We're going to try to run it on our iPhone. So we're going to press the play button here and see how it looks like. Build succeeded, and then you rest the simulator. We see you have a little iPhone screen coming up here. Yeah, just like a real iPhone, but yeah, and we see oh, see the app starting here. Exciting, looks. Uh, it's completely white right now. Uh, yeah, here we go. It took a bit of time for it to start. Sometimes that happens. But see, so we see all of the stuff we have created here. You see name of food, and then we press the box here, and we see you should see a keyboard coming up. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do we get that? Do, 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 do. Keyboard. Uh, okay, so what I did was hardware, keyboard, toggle software, keyboard. Uh, 
basically my app assumed that I had connected a Bluetooth keyboard of some sort. Uh, what should happen is what we see now that the keyboard actually pops up like this. If I press, if I press uh, this function here, you can change keyboard and so on. Uh, I have a few different keyboards. Doesn't matter really. If I press, uh, if I rem press and remove the keyboard, it will hide. And if I press the box here again, it will pop up. And then I can write something. Yada yada yada. Blah, 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 and press down. Not much gonna happen now. We haven't we haven't uh, put any functions to this box yet. But we can see that the app works. We have some uh, label. We have the button. We have some text. It's a legit app. It's pretty cool. So well done. And this was the first part of a tutorial. Uh, and it, and what I have looked at today was just the jumping right in button and learning how to build a basic UI. And then there is more functions coming later.